Hello, BookTube. <laughs> We're back again. We did more book hunting. We did. Really, this is the thing that's synonymous with book hunting with me in Boston. We went to the Brattle. We went to the Brattle Bookshop in Boston, which, for those of you who are new to the channel, it's a used bookstore in the heart of downtown Boston, and it's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Also a welcoming place, which is nice. And not, I mean, the book barn in Niantic, believe it or not, despite all the strangers they see, all the vacationers they see, they're very welcoming. Uh, but the Brattle is too. Uh, yeah, and it doesn't feel like a complete visit until we've gone. No, to, no. Yeah. So we went, and despite the fact that this is, what, day four? Uh, we got a pile of books. Both of us did. Uh, so we're just going to go through those. Uh, I think I numerically got more, but I can do a lot of mine. I can do my first two in batches, and the first batch is, the first batch is wonderful. It is really nice if you're used bookstore spot something from a, the recent buy that they think you might like uh, and put it aside for you without you asking for it at all. That's really nice. It's even nicer when they're right. <laughs> and uh, Zach from the Brattle, who you all remember, he's been on this channel a few times, he found me a series of historical novels starring a lusty crusader. <laughs> There's the Crusader, book five, Saladin's Spy. Uh, I don't... There's book one, The Accursed Tower, and book two, The Passionate Princess. And then uh, book three, Julianar the Lioness, and book four, My Lady Queen. Zach could not have been any more spot on about these. I'm going to consume them. Uh, and the other block thing that I got was something that continues over from the last Brattle Hall. I found more of these, these battered mass market Patrick O'Briens. Uh, one of these, uh, The Far Side of the World, which... We'll have part of a, a plot that will be familiar to you if you've seen the movie. Has the, uh, or actually two of them, no, uh, HMS Surprise. Also, these two have the cover art that is common on the American editions. But I got Post Captain and Desolation Island, and they don't. They have the UK artwork that I don't have. I like have that otherwise. better. I like yeah. this a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, for a dollar a piece, uh, I grabbed them. I might, might. Assemble the whole set. Oh my God, there was so much Dudley Pope there in Mass Market, but I. Once you've you've had something as good as Patrick O'Brien, you don't you don't go back to just ordinary blood and swash type uh, historical fiction. There's something there's an extra element in these books. If you've read them, then you probably know what I'm talking about. We were talking on it uh, last night about fiction that's for real adults. <laughs> it doesn't oh, yeah. feel like it's phoning anything in. Uh, so that was I got a big bunch of mass market paperbacks. Oh, oh okay. yeah, right. <laughs> I'm looking down the stack here. Oh, we'll my. Um, this, nobody's going to react that way to this. No, this brace is, yourself. <laughs> this is from Max Weber. Uh, this is Essays in Sociology. Uh, this is put up by Oxford. I have, I suspect, a lot of these, but I'll have to look. I don't know if it's the University of Chicago or California Press. I can't remember now, but, there, but there's these two big volumes of Max Weber that they put out um uh, it's this, I'm blank on the title, but it's, it's on politics and sociology, and so I'll have to see what's somewhere between those. But Max Weber is great. I think he is still good to read, too. Uh, I love him, so I'm happy to have that. I, I don't have much of him at home at all. Um, Where did you find that? This? Oh, my God. Yeah, the portable Emerson. Oh. I'm having great luck with these, but um, at this point, I have so many. I'm not. I'm. I'm seeing a lot of repeats, but this is the first time I've, I've never seen the seen portable that. Emerson, and it's in perfect condition, no writing in it. Um, so really happy to have that too. Um, Ooh, you've got one more mass market paper. Yeah, I'll do one more mass market. I guess this is the a Pelican book. Um, I've been buying a lot of these. This is Monopoly Capital. By Paul uh, Barron and then Paul Sweezy. I know Paul Sweezy. I don't know uh, the first author there. We'll see. This looks like it is a formal study um, with you know income accounts there and and the like. So we'll see. Um, <sighs> Monopoly is actually pretty well understood by economists, and so I'll, I'll be curious to see how much of this holds up. Um, and I know the subject fairly well, actually. So I. I'll dip into this, see if it's any good. If it's not, I'll probably dump it. But if it is, then I'll just read it straight through. We'll see. Um, so those are my mass markets. Does that portable Emerson have letters? Yeah, it's got two, um, actually, Carlyle. Or is it, yeah, two Thomas Carlyle. Oh, the one that stuck out look to me. at all that from but journals. Martin Van Buren, too. Oh, and, what a yeah, portable. it's a good selection. 
But even if I'd seen it first, I would probably have handed it to you because I'm that great. <laughs> a fact that was empirically confirmed at the Brattle today because yes. I was approached by an adoring fan. <laughs> right out of the blue. Uh, saying, you don't know me. <laughs> So, so hi if you're watching it was wonderful fun take yeah, a his selfie ego didn't need that by the way i'm <laughs> no. sure you're watching so i can't wait it's about two o'clock this morning i'll be hearing about it again <laughs> if you if you take it in your head to do that feel free to approach me i am very very approachable <laughs> and you your, your visit to the brow is not complete unless you've taken the classic picture of me and you in front of the sign <laughs> but uh anyway uh i found a lovely mylar hardcover of this this is wk jordan this is edward the sixth uh the young king this is one half of a two volume set that jordan did about uh henry the eighth's legitimate male heir just above my head here there are six biographies of edward the sixth who only lived to a teenager and he died young so uh, chaos ensued. He he didn't he didn't rule for fifty years as everyone was expecting because he was a healthy boy. Uh, but this Jordan studies. Of course, he came to the throne when he was a little boy, so there there was a kind of regency. There was a protectorate, and it made laws. It printed coins. It writ proclamations. It had big personalities in it. And Jordan wrote two volumes on that, and I only found the one. So I need to find the other one. <laughs> Sooner or later, I need to. There's no way that someone sold this to the browser and didn't sell the other one. And there's no way that any casual browser is going to want the one without the other. So it will turn up. <laughs> it will turn up. And it's it's great. You, uh, I, no offense to the biographies up above my head, but it's by far the best biographical treatment of uh, of this kid who ruled England for a little while and then gave way to chaos <laughs> i gave way to chaos jane gray then bloody mary finally elizabeth uh, but anyway I, I know you're fascinated but <laughs> i'm glad i found the one volume i had these two once upon a time i don't anymore i'll just have to wait to find this the other one <sighs> okay um this is also not very dramatic this is a new economic view of american history um, and I'm not familiar with either, either of these authors, uh, Jeremy Attic or Peter Passell. Um, and this looks like it's just a, oh, <laughs> it's blurred by Donald McCloskey, now Deidre McCloskey, who wrote the Be uh, Bourgeois Trilogy. So, um, that's a good sign. I, um... Is it an actual textbook? I think it is. Yeah. Definitely. There's too much math in here for it to not be, I think. Um... But I, I noticed a fair bit of economics out in the lot, but it was all pretty niche, some of it like this. Um, although most of it not quite this new, and this isn't very new. This is probably from the 80s. And I noticed all the marginalia in the books so was the same handwriting, so somebody just dumped them, I think. Uh, I was hoping initially when I saw those pop up that there would be a lot more economics, but uh, there's just... Well, there might things. be. They might it could be, be in the basement, I suppose. There yeah. was there was a lot of economics. There were there, every popular biography ever written of Queen Elizabeth II. And a ton of World War II books. A ton of them. Like, they saw David coming. <laughs> uh, I got only one of those books myself. Oh, yeah, uh, I was saying, if you wanted to build a World War II library, assuming you didn't already have one, you could easily do it there on the cheap. Yeah. I got uh, Peter Fritz's book, An Iron Wind. If I remember, if I'm a good boy and I remember, I will leave a link to my review of this down below. Not a long thing, but really, really good. Really sharp. And I don't know if you can tell on camera in the dodgy light here, but it's covered in dust uh, because the Brattle is renovating their wall, the wall that overlooks the sail lot. So there's either, I mean, they've got tarp and everything over it, but there's no way to avoid getting dust on the books. This next um, one is the final. Yeah, one. mine is, I think, now all World War II. Yeah, all the rest yeah, of this is yeah, World War II. I only had one. So very. Look back. at that, though. That was this. So... Yeah, this is uh, Peter Longrich's Heinrich Him Himmler biography. Um, I read his Hitler biography, which was really good. Uh, huge, like fifteen hundred pages. And if you're looking for a single volume biography of Hitler to have, it's probably the one to have. No offense I, I to say. any of the others. Yeah, they're all. So um, a lot of the others are really good, but that, that or uh, did. Did Volker Ulrich? Yeah, two volume. Two volume that volume. is in English. Yeah. That came, yeah, yeah, that was translated. Yeah, really good. Uh, but I haven't read this one. I he's got this one. I think he's got a Hermann Goering biography too. Uh, I haven't read this or that one. 
Uh, but on the strength of the Hitler one, I'm, I'm going to. I, I knew I wanted this. I didn't really expect to see it. I, so that's that amazing. Great. I would have grabbed that. Yeah. I got. I had the the galley copy. We saw it on this channel, and I got the finished copy. We saw it on this channel, and I reviewed it. Uh, I was thinking the whole time about David Irving, uh, the disgraced British historian who wrote a biography of Himmler. And <sighs> Hitler's War was at the book barn. Was it really? Yeah, the, the main difference, be, aside from later research, the main difference between uh, Longerich's book and Irving's book is that Irving is sad that Himmler is dead. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and no one else should be. Ugh. You shouldn't be sad. Although there are, there are mysteries surrounding the circumstances of his death mm -hmm. that Irving digs right into. You know, out of out of outrage, <laughs> he digs right into them. <laughs> uh, I got uh, another book for a couple of books from uh, for my uh, wall of books about books, literary criticism, that sort of thing. A nice hardcover of Robert Wool's collected prose, where he was a famous poet, so he was asked to write things, and a critic's notebook by the irascible Irving Howe. Uh, I've had this many, many times on and off, and when I saw it today, I realized why is that? Why do you have it on and off? Why not just get it, a copy and keep it. These things are all going to have to be clean, though. I don't usually clean my Brattle books, but they're all all the ones from the sale lot have a patina of dust on them. Okay, yeah, <laughs> oh, this isn't getting it's, any it's him again. <laughs> lighter in any way. This is uh, Ian Kershaw's the first volume of his Hitler biography, which is, as I'm sure many of you know, a seminal work. Um, and I, I don't have it, so I'm happy to have it. You I don't do have, have either the, volume. I, well, I have the e-copies, but I don't have either volume at home. Yeah, and I. There's a newer printing of this that I don't particularly uh, like, just the cover and stuff. Not that it's thrilling to look at Hitler here, but um, I, I like this. This is a good, sturdy thing, so um, I'll hang on to this and then hopefully find the second volume at some point. Be sure to leave it on the nightstand the next time a date comes over. <laughs> <laughs> I, have descri I have like a biography bookcase, and I very much have the, all the dictator <laughs> biographies down at the bottom <laughs> stuff to the right to the, the couch is going over it a little bit uh, I found a classic uh, Walter Muir Whitehill was forever and ever and ever the librarian of the Boston Athenaeum he was a wonderful kind gentle man and all knowing about Boston you could ask him uh, who the president was of the United States and he might take a minute but any history any detail of Boston history and he wrote uh, this thing Oh, this is the next library copy. This is probably Melrose Public Library discarded. Boo on you, Melrose Public Library. 1959. Uh, this is Boston and Topographical History. And it's slightly oddly sized. It's not sized like a normal hardcover. And it's full of illustrations uh, of the, the way the map of Boston has changed over the years. And I have recommended countless copies of this book to people who asked me, what is a really good one history, one volume history of Boston? A really accessible history of Boston, and forever and ever, this was the best one. Don't let the the subtitle fool you. This is this is a history of Boston, the way the city grows, but also the people that made it grow. But then well, after there... driving around Boston, I'm <laughs> yes, curious. Yes. <laughs> it was a nightmare. It's a nightmare city to drive around in. But I mean, and, and excuse me, the book has been supplanted. There is an, there was a, a couple of years ago a big fat history of Boston that is slightly better. More intimidating. It, this is much more accessible, and uh, I don't have a copy. Every time I see it at the Brattle, it's a trade paperback, so I was happy to have a hardcover. Um, okay, um, then here again, more World War II. I haven't read this, actually, or pre-war a little bit. This is uh, Cry Havoc, uh, How the Arms Race Drove the World to War. Um, and I, I, I don't know what to make of this. We'll see. Of course, there was an uh, arms race pre-war that a lot of people don't. Um, that a lot of histories tend to skip over, but especially in Britain, uh, Chamberlain uh, built up. He doesn't get a lot of credit for that. Uh, naval build up, especially in the Pacific. Um, yeah, that's is true, big, isn't it? The, know, the, the arms race at the beginning of World War One gets lots of attention, mm -hmm. but not World War Two. No, yeah, um, and I don't know if it's just because they focus on appeasement and maybe those narratives clash or something. Uh, I, I I don't know, but uh, I'm not familiar with, familiar with this author, Joseph. Mayolo uh, or this book, so I'll be interested in it. Um, I found a UK trade paperback. I had a terrible experience last night with a UK trade paperback. I read David Starkey's book on King Henry VIII, and it not only was not good, but it blew apart like a pomegranate seed. So I, a little bit leery, but I, I slept found... last night. <laughs> you read that book, and I slept. <laughs> 
I'm trying to be good. <laughs> I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to remember that when three o'clock rolls around, if I say, oh, you know what we should watch next? And the, <laughs> the, the human in the chair is on the edge of psychopathy. I should, I try to remember that. Tomorrow we'll have a nice, relaxed day, a nice, lazy morning while I will, I, I, every morning of my life. I spend waiting for the people I like to wake up. <laughs> that's, that's every morning. What about uh, me? Uh, it's no. wear and thin. <laughs> <laughs> I found a UK trade paperback of Hermione Lee's biography of Edith Wharton. Never seen this before. I, you, you people in the UK, you're so lucky. You don't have UK trade paperbacks. You just have trade paperbacks. <laughs> you can go to the, your local Oxfam shop and get as many of these as you want. I love them. Uh, and I don't have, uh, I had a, the American trade paperback, uh, and I saw this on the shelf and thought, well, you should hold out for the American trade paperback, but I have been told that shopping for blurbs is bad. So I got this instead. So now I have a trade paperback of it, fine by me. I don't need certain blurbs on my books. You didn't say, <laughs> nobody said they were bad. We were just wondering what you were doing. <laughs> um... And then this is Crossing the Rhine by uh, Lloyd Clark. Uh, I have read Lloyd Clark, but I haven't read this book. Um, and actually, I'm going to do this with my last one, because this is Breaking into Germany, 1944 to 1945. And then I have Max Hastings' Armageddon on the battle for Germany. Some great end-of-war stuff. Um, as I got better and better read in World War II, I found pretty quickly that one of my favorite areas to read about is the end of the European campaign. It's just endlessly fascinating. Uh, my favorite, and we've talked about this a few times, is The End by Ian Kershaw, but these are good volumes, too. So, Isn't it amazing, too, though, that the, the war is like that? You, can, you have people who only study one little part of it, mm -hmm. and yet they never run out of things to read and never run out of great stuff. I, I love that. It's endless, about yeah. it. I, I knew somebody years and years ago who only read about Pearl Harbor, the attack on Pearl Harbor. That's it. Never branched out from that. I said, well, doesn't this make you curious to read about the Japanese Navy? And he said, no. <laughs> no, just this. Uh, I and, and there's a market for it because Pearl Harbor, for example, there's Pearl Harbor minute by minute. It's like a thousand page book. I mean, you can do that. It's, it's nuts. I, I found another UK book. This is a hardcover, In Search of the Perfect House, which is just a endless amounts of color photos of various homes, not just aristocratic homes but cottages and whatnot i i love things like this i could daydream about them forever uh i found another collection for my books about books bookshelf uh uh speaking of edith wharton this is edith wharton's great biographer before hermione Lee, and this is a collect i never knew this thing existed uh i knew this guy had a thoroughly literary life but now i have uh, a bunch of his what does he what does he write about uh shakespeare camus virgil uh, Edgar Allan Poe, Melville, The Letters of Edith Wharton. He did a great volume, of a great collection of The Letters of Edith Wharton. Uh, and then finally, the last thing, which I found at the last minute while I was talking to my adoring fans out in the sale lot, uh, James Burke's Connections. There he, there he is in all his glory. Uh, great, a great series that I'm sure is available on some streaming service somewhere about the connections between different types of technology and how unforeseen uses can lead to whole new industries. It sounds a little dry, but boy, is it not. Uh, watch the series. And every time I have ever seen this book, including the copy that I had for years, it was a trade paperback that was really poorly made. I, I haven't seen hardcover of this in forever. So I saw it, I grabbed it because it was lucky that I was out there. I was out there pressing the flesh. <laughs> and there you go. More books. We went to the Brattle. It was a ton of fun. We did. It was fun. It's familiar it always works yeah it's you never come out empty-handed yeah. uh so that's it that's it for today sorry for the uh, the one video a day we will i will we'll go back to business as usual i'm sorry <laughs> it's my fault <laughs> yeah. it's, i i you all know my pattern eventually i think david is going to leave <laughs> and then i'm going to be miserable for a it might while be cheaper to move in than send these all home we'll <laughs> you see. have to mail you have so many books to mail oh my you know, to decrease the load, just I'm thinking of you. You should probably leave that Emerson behind. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, that's that's a lot to mail. I'll, I'll send it to you. Uh, 
Yeah, we still have to find. We still have to dig out somewhere here the Viking portable Harlem Renaissance reader, oh, which I, I didn't send. I did find that. So it's yeah. just, oh, yeah. it's here somewhere. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, we're gonna sign off and get some food. Uh, but we'll be back. <laughs> Thank you, Book Two. Thanks, Book Two. <laughs>